Hello and welcome to MultimediaDesigner.com. My name is Gary Petrie and today we we're going to be going over formatting a bulleted text slide in PowerPoint. Now the version of PowerPoint I'm using com comes from the new Microsoft Office 2010. Uh, it's you know different than previous versions of course they continue to make improvements but uh, some of the features and directions of how things are done are are totally different so if you do have an older version um, things might look a little bit different but a lot of the functionality is still the same and you know for what we're going to be doing today um, you should be able to do everything I'm doing here um, in your other version of PowerPoint. First thing we're going to be doing in this formatting a bulleted text slide is working on the heading. Now the heading being the top text of the slide and the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we have all the text on one line. We do that by bringing over this text box to the right. We want to actually click down on one of these areas over here and dr drag it to the right. By doing that, that brings the PowerPoint word up to the top line of text. Now, just a kind of a, a note here is that whenever you're creating a presentation and you have different varieties of lengths of uh, headings because sometimes you might have a lot of words in your heading sometimes you only have a few words make sure that you figure out how many of those are you going to have I, I when I create a presentation I tend to have no more than two lines of text for a heading but if you have short headings and long headings you want to make sure that you format no more than two or three different types of of headings. You don't want all these different sizes on your headings and be all over the place. It's nice to have that consistency throughout. And it looks what's more neat about this new version of PowerPoint is anytime that you go over something you will see it happening behind you. It's almost like a live preview of the change that you're going to be making. And it, it's it's pretty cool. What I want to do is I just want to be able to change that to gold. Now you also have the option of more colors. If you go to more colors, you actually have standard colors and then you have custom colors. The custom colors comes in real handy if you have like a logo that you have to keep uh, the same look to, the same color. If you have a background that was already designed and you want to keep a consistent um, color palette together, that's what's nice about this custom palette. But for testing purposes today, I'm just going to choose that gold color. So now we have our text in gold. What we want also want to do is we want to then highlight the, the text again and we want to choose a different font. Arial is kind of plain. Now we can bold Arial if we wanted to, but if we want to just click on that Arial, um, this Arial font or this little um, down arrow next to it, and you want to scroll down and choose a different font. Now for testing purposes today I'm just going to choose Futura Heavy. And, you and see after we've done highlighting the copy you want to go up to the line spacing icon. Now that's at the top of the screen and you'll see that it says line spacing. If I click on that I then have the, chain, the options of changing the actual uh, line spacing itself. Now this would be for the line spacing um, for each line of text, not the actual paragraph or between bullets, but the actual lines of text. See, and again, any time that you go over stuff in PowerPoint 2010, you will see that it actually adjusts things in like a live view. I, I kind of like that feature. Now um, I'm going to choose 1.0. And the reason I chose 1.0 is um, it's a pretty standard uh, distance between lines of text. And um, back back in the time when they had typesetting equipment, uh, they actually called it leading. And the leading is the distance between the bottom of the font and the next line, the bottom of the next. Um, font, the bottom of the next uh, line. And that is called letting. And the letting on standard used to be about two point sizes larger 
than the actual font size. So if you would have on this screen, we have a 28 point um, font. So the letting would have been 30 point. And that's why I chose that size of line spacing because that's about what a 30 point letting would end up being for this particular size of font. So you then want to highlight this area again, all this text. And we want to go up to that line spacing tool again. And this time we want to hit line spacing options. And when we choose line spacing options, you have a few different um, um, areas here. One of them is indentation. Now indentation would actually indent this text a little bit. Um, and you can increase that to just about every any number. Now that works well with like table charts and stuff, but for bulleted slides it's really um, not too uh, many reasons to have an indentation unless you like had multiple like secondary bullets and you wanted to indent a little bit you could you could utilize that there but we're not going to have that at this point we're just we're just wanting to change the line spacing between each actual bullet we want to be able to create um, a line spacing in this area we have before and after and this would be before paragraph and after paragraph but in this case we want to just change the spacing before the paragraph and again that would work well not only with paragraph but also bullets so if we change this the spacing and it goes six points at a time if we put this at 24 point and clicked OK you'll see that it added a really nice spacing between these lines of text or bullets and it actually looks really nice it's it's very easy easily readable so um, next what we want to do is we actually want to change the tab between the bullet and the beginning of the um, line of text so again we want to highlight your copy and we want to go up here to the top screen where you'd actually place your tabs and this is the same in any version of PowerPoint you have this in any version um, and you want to be able to pull this tab over to about right there and you'll see that now if I click off you'll see that it adds a nice space between the bullet and the beginning of the line of text and it's nice and vertical everything straight nothing shifting to the left and it works well and again we're gonna highlight all the text again and the reason why we highlight all the text and I've been doing that throughout this demonstration is that if I were to only highlight like the first bullet those changes would occur on the first bullet but not any of the other bullets so it's best you know to get used to highlighting everything unless you just want to change like the color of just that bulleted font or something but but uh, we're highlighting everything because I want to change all the bullets not just that first one so we want to highlight all the text we want to then go up to where we see this bulleted icon now if we click on that you'll actually see that the bullet actually disappears but if we click on it again the bullets back nothing's really changed we just got rid of the bullet and added it but what we want to do is we actually want to go to and click the pull down menu that's next to it the little arrow that's next to this bulleted um, icon so if you click that down arrow you'll see that a little pop-up comes now you can say none here and you have different options to change your bullet but I like going to bullets and numbering because I, it allows me to change the color as well as choosing a different bullet. So if I bring up this bullet numbering box, I can from here choose the star bullet. I can then change that star bullet color. In this case, I'm going to change it to that gold color that we chose earlier and we'll say OK and now you'll see that we added a really nice bullet it's just not a circle it's a little larger uh, it makes those lines of text stand out a little bit better and that's adding more 
today's demonstration we're going to be doing a superscript. So what you want to do is you want to highlight the text that you want to superscript. In this case we're going to do the TM. Now if I highlight the TM I go up and I click on this little little arrow that's in the bottom left hand corner under this font section. It's barely visible and I'm not sure why they made it that small but if you click on that you'll see that the font box comes up. And When that font box comes up you do have the option to make that superscript. All you would do is then click that you would then click OK and then you'll see that that TM lifts up gets smaller and it it makes it a much better um, much better slide to see that. Now we want to add that same effect to the registered R. If you don't know how to insert the registered R, the easiest one of the easiest and, and it's always been available is doing the character map that comes within Windows. And the character map looks like this. And you usually find that uh, under accessories in your Windows um, start menu and uh, this is something that I use quite often for s certain characters that you may not um, have on the keyboard itself so you want to be able to like double click on this R you can select it or you can then just highlight it and then hit copy and then paste that into whatever program that you're using that's how I was able to get it in here. But if we want to just highlight that registered R, you want to go up to this little arrow again, click on it, bring up the font box, say superscript, hit OK, and you'll see that now that registered R is... Widows are words that sit all by themselves at the end of a sentence or paragraph. Now in this demonstration we have the word screen that's sitting here all by itself. It kind of looks out of place, like it doesn't belong with the rest of the text. And that's the one thing that nobody likes about widows, is that they kind of look out of place, they kind of look odd. In this case we want to be able to move a word or two down to that next line of text to help occupy that space that that widow's on. What you need to do is you create a soft return. A soft return is very simple. All you would do is put your cursor where you want to create your soft return. You would then hold your shift key down on your keyboard and then hit your enter key on your keyboard. And by doing that, it wraps the word, in this case, the word on down to the next line and occupies that space with the widow. That is called a soft return. Now the last thing I want to talk about is how much copy is too much copy on a slide. Now, it's my experience, and I've been doing this for 20 years, that you really don't want no more than 35 words on a slide. I have clients that give me slides and they're just way too busy. If you have a slide that has more than 35 words on it, a, a bulleted text slide, chances are nobody's going to read it. So what you want to do is you want to keep that number in your head of 35. Anything more than that, you're going to want to break that slide into two. And I'll show you how to do that right now. For this testing purposes, I'm going to actually just going to highlight my slide over here in the, in the slide viewer, and I'm going to hit Control D and copy that slide. And what you want to do is if you have more copy on a, on a bulleted slide, you want to cut that into two, you want to add the word continued to your title. And you do that by C O N T apostrophe D. That's abbreviation for continued. This is really the best way of doing this. And what you want to do is you want to highlight your copy and you want to reduce that font a little bit. So let's reduce this font down to let's say 34 but then we can reduce this continued a lot more. It doesn't need to be the same size as your title it actually looks better if it's slightly smaller like that and we can actually to make consistent we can actually go into this uh, previous slide and make that 34 as well that's it for this lesson of formatting a bulleted text slide in PowerPoint 
from Microsoft Office 2010.